This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. The cost of the project just kept going up. First it was, you know, it started 2 to 3, then it was 6.7, then it was 25, then it became 40, then it became 52. Honestly now, I can't tell you how much it is. Nathan Bedison Park, the World Rowing Championships were a hit, but questions over tax money are making waves. Were the tens of millions of dollars of tax money payers worth it? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the taxpayers' money for Nathan Bedrosen Park in a moment. But first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with questions surrounding the alleged sexual battery on the 17-year-old Riverview High School student. Residents on Parma Street, where the girl says the battery took place, are wondering why it took so long to notify the public. The battery allegedly took place on October 13th, but parents at the school found out five days later on the 18th when the school issued a robocall. The sheriff's office tells ABC 7 it chose to wait to gather accurate information. The school district declined our interview request and referred us to an old Facebook post. Why composites weren't put out there? Something could have been put on everybody's mailbox on our street. Keep your eyes peeled. You know, we want to get this guy for this poor girl. The investigation into the assault continues. After nine hours, a standoff between Northport police and a suspect is over. 34-year-old Roman Malinchik is charged with two counts of aggravated assault, one count of false imprisonment, two counts of domestic battery, and one count of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Police were called to the home shortly after 3 a.m. Malinchik had been allegedly drinking and smoking spice with a juvenile after battering a woman inside. At one point, he threatened to kill himself he eventually agreed to give up. A senior citizens group is asking the state's attorney in Tallahassee to look into the deletion of voicemails left for Governor Rick Scott by the Rehabilitation Center at Hollywood Hills following Hurricane Irma. 14 residents of the nursing home died as a result of not having air conditioning when Irma knocked the power out. According to the governor's office, voicemails left on Scott's personal cell phone by nursing home staff were deleted after information was passed along to state agencies. People deserve to know the timeline of what happened. There is no more important responsibility for a governor than protecting its citizens, especially retirees, the disabled, the most vulnerable and frail citizens. The governor's office released a statement saying in part the nursing home should have called 911 if and when their residents were in immediate danger rather than Scott's personal cell phone. Governor Scott was in Naples today announcing a proposal to protect Florida's environment. Scott is proposing more than $1.7 billion to protect Florida's environment as part of his 2018-2019 budget. The funding would represent a $220 million increase over this year. It includes $55 million for Florida Springs, $100 million for Florida Beaches, $355 million for Everglades Rest restoration, $50 million for Florida State Parks, and $50 million for Florida Forever to help preserve and protect natural lands. Congressman Vern Buchanan is signing on to an effort to combat human trafficking. Buchanan called on the House leadership to fast-track a Senate-passed bill that increases penalties for perpetrators and gives law enforcement more tools to treat human trafficking like organized crime. Florida ranks third in the nation behind California and Texas in the number of reported trafficking cases. Florida taxpayers will be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to cover the legal bills rung up by Agriculture Consumer Commissioner Adam Putnam, who, by the way, is running for governor. The state is paying nearly $437,000 of federal appeals courts signed sided with an all-natural dairy that fought the state's demands to label it skim milk imitation because vitamins are not added to it. Even though the use of so-called civil citations for juvenile offenders in Florida are on the rise, some communities and law enforcement agencies 
are refusing to use them. Civil citations are an alternative to criminal charges for crimes like fighting, minor drug and alcohol offenses, and petty theft. Kids can be required to do community service and write letters of apology to victims. Statewide civil citations were used in only 53% of eligible cases. Miami-Dade and Pinellas County use the citations over 90% of the time, while many small counties never use them. If you're concerned about public safety, you want to reduce crime, giving kids a juvenile civil citation is better because they are less likely to commit another crime in the future rather than, than compared to if you arrest them. McCoy also says when teenagers are arrested for minor crimes, it sets up kids for future run-ins with the law. Now let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. Alan, I'll tell you, we are looking at a big change uh, coming our way and looks as though it will be a rather strong and significant one, too. Uh, the cold front itself is still back well to the west of us right now as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico. It will eventually slide on through in the morning on Tuesday, ushering in some cooler. air. Now, it won't be all that cold on Tuesday. It'll be much colder on Wednesday, and it will be uh, in the low 70s for highs only. Now, get a look at the Titan radar live sweep from Key West, Miami, Tampa, and Melbourne right now showing a large area of Moderate to heavy rainfall, especially over Pinellas County. Uh, this has issued uh, some flooding as a result of the heavy rainfall. The National Weather Service issued that advisory just about a half hour ago. And now that is moving into Anna Maria Island, eventually into northwest Braden here. There's a large area of moderate to heavy rainfall, which will cause some flooding problems on some of the roadways there in the next hour or so. This eventually works its way southward. The cold front's still back here. Uh, this is a little prefrontal trough out ahead of it. Boy, it's been getting... Uh, they've been getting some heavy rainfall over two inches now in southern portions of Pinellas County near St. Petersburg. And you see the area in green indicates the flood advisory now covering most of the peninsula there uh, on in through uh, Pinellas County. Now the uh, area advisory is in effect until 715. Uh, we had a marine warning earlier that has since expired with that cell. But boy, a couple of lightning strikes also starting to fire up right there. I would suspect that another marine warning will be issued rather soon. Tough driving along the Sunshine Skyway Bridge as well. So if you have a trip planned to Tampa or uh, again into Pinellas County, you might want to delay it for an hour or so as this line of intense showers and thunderstorms move on through. Again, it uh, looks as though we will see the possibility of some uh, showers later on tonight. Currently, we have some clouds and 82 degrees and 76 on the dew point. That number is going to drop significantly tomorrow afternoon as that cooler and drier air starts to filter in. The pressure, 2995, that's starting to rise now as a result, again, high pressure building in behind the system will eventually uh, really clear us out, but that won't happen until late tomorrow. Now, but boy, uh, we're talking uh, going from summer right into almost winter like temperatures uh, beginning on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I'm just thinking it's good for the lawn, but uh, not easy to get home. That's right. <laughs> right now, some big storms for you. you know, looks All right. Like Thanks All right. a lot, Bob. And still to come, the World Rowing Championships cost taxpayers over $40 million. Was it worth it? Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. 
Attention blood thinner users. If your loved one took Xarelto or Pradaxa and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. The widely prescribed blood thinners Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to a number of dangerous side effects, including internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, kidney bleeding, stroke, brain hemorrhaging, and even death. If you or a loved one suffered any of these injuries after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call right now. You may be owed significant compensation from the menu. Manufacturer. Thousands of blood thinner users may have been exposed to serious risk by these dangerous medications. If you or loved one took Xarelto or Pradax and suffered serious internal bleeding, call right now. Call Nightline Legal to speak with an experienced attorney for a free consultation. If we don't win, there is no fee. There are time deadlines to file a claim, so don't wait. Call right now. Call 1-800-554-3987. Again, that's 1-800-554-3987. ABC 7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. While some feel the 2017 World Rowing Championships lived up to expectations, others say the tournament host, Nathan Benderson Park, fell short despite racking up big bills in public funds. ABC 7's Adam Cellini is here to explain Adam. Well, Alan, the championships were a big regatta. More are on the schedule, but this has always been a public-private partnership, and the spotlight is now on the private side to come through with their end of the agreement. The 2017 World Rowing Championships have come and gone, and for many, met the hype built over four years of anticipation. FISA officials and U.S. rowing officials were very uh, impressed with the park. From the coaches and the participants, they say it was the best they've ever had. But some with a longer memory, back to 2009 when the Nathan Benderson Park project was pitched to Sarasota County, passed judgment on a different scale. The park they were told they were going to row in is not there, okay? And so by that standard, it was not a success. The failure question comes in, did this perform the way it was expected? Were we sold a bill of goods? Back then, a world-class course, boathouses, and judges tower cost an estimated $6.7 million. A year later, the vision changed. Capital improvements grew larger and more elaborate, and Sarasota County's bill went from five <laughs> to nearly $20 million. The cost of the project just kept going up. First it was, you know, it started two to three, then it was 6.7, then it was 25, then it became 40, then it became 52. And right away the, the public, you know, stepped up. Today, more than 40 million in public funds have gone to the park next to University Town Center Mall. A former Benderson development project who was also paid nearly $3 million to oversee the park's construction and now uses the facility as stormwater runoff for UTC. In return, the Nathan Benderson Park Foundation, led by Randy Benderson, pledged to raise over $20 million in private funds for capital improvements. But out of the grandstand, boathouse, and finish tower touted to tax Taxpayers in these videos, only one was built in time for the championships. It was starting to become obvious that the private part of this partnership was not meeting its obligation. It really became a red flag for me, and I believe the year was around 2012 when they were going to the state for money. The group that runs the park, Suncoast Aquatic Nature Center Associates, have become notorious for annual state funding requests. As a Florida senator, Nancy Dietert called it corporate welfare, and though her title has since changed, her sentiments have not. My perspective, frankly, hasn't changed on that. Parks don't make money. Roads don't make money. <laughs> Um, if it's a break even, I'm fine with it. Fellow County Commissioner Charles Hines, however, is willing to give Sanka a pass on their original promise to become self sustaining. We can't just assume that Sanka is going to run that park all by itself, zero cost to the tourist development tax because it is a public park. It's open all the time. The boathouse, which we're told is still in the works, was always an important piece of driving revenue for the park. But Hines refuses to pass blame on the foundation or Randy Benderson. I kind of get a little upset when people try to think or, or, or accuse him of not, you know, not doing enough. How many other people put, I think the finishing tower was over six million dollars. Um, that's a lot of money. For, for an individual to, to commit. Benderson himself tells us $7 million had been raised for the tower. And back in January, Foundation board member Mike Bennett boasted a figure twice as high to lawmakers. $5 million will complete our boathouse. 
we have raised about $15 million from private money. And through the foundation, we will continue to fund it. We asked Benderson for a donor list, but we're told, sorry, the donor list is private. We would not send without the written consent of each individual donor. Still, the fact remains that whatever has been raised has only produced a fraction of what's been promised. We need some transparency. We need some accountability. We need to see where things stand at this point and then decide what happens in the future. The final price of that finished tower did end up a little bit over a million dollars more than anticipated. And Randy Benerson tells us the $10 million estimate for the boathouse could change as well. We should know uh, for sure over the next three months, Alan. And then thank you. In a moment, let's row on over to the trapezoid to make some waves. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. Attention knee replacement patients. If you had surgery in 2011 or later and needed revision surgery, listen closely. You may be entitled to compensation. The FDA has received numerous reports of early device failure involving certain implants. Examples of device failure include loosening, dislocation, and dissociation or separation of the implant. Symptoms of device failure may include pain, swelling, joint instability, warmth of the joint, inflammation, and redness of the skin. If you had knee replacement surgery in 2011 or later and suffered complications that required additional surgery, you may be entitled to compensation. Even if you're not sure which brand was used in your surgery, you may still be eligible for compensation. Call Sokolov Law now at 1-800-466-4206 for a free legal consultation. That's 1-800-466-4206. Again, that's 1-800-466-4206. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. Welcome back. We'll be learning next month what economic impact the World Rowing Championships had on the Sunk Coast. There's no doubt, however, it put the Sarasota Bradenton area on the worldwide map when it comes to the international rowing community, and that is great. But will taxpayers be getting a return on their investment? It has been estimated $40 million in public funding has gone into Nathan Benderson Park, Sarasota's county's tab alone, nearly $20 million. Despite that, the promised $10 million boathouse still has not been built. Several other facilities that have been planned also have not been built yet. And joining us for more is Rick Piccolo, CEO of Sarasota Bradenton International Airport and a member of the Nathan Benderson Community Park Foundation, Virginia Halley, president of Visit Sarasota County, Kathy Atunas, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio, and Pat Rounds, a community activist. I welcome you all. Uh, and Virginia, uh, I'm going to start with you because a lot of people may have watched Adam's uh, story and say, oh my goodness, how much, you know, taxpayer money went to this. We do not know yet uh, in terms of, of how the economic, uh, the area profited in terms of the economics uh, of this World Rowing Championship. When will we know and how are you looking at, at it all? Uh, we have brought in a, uh, a research firm from Tallahassee. They were at the, uh, the park every day. Now they're working with the teams and the coaches around the world, gathering all the data from each team. We wanted to be very precise because we know this economic impact is very important for the community. 
So we expect it will take probably about two to three weeks more to get it all wrapped up. But obviously from what we've heard from all the rowers, uh, we put on perhaps the best championship ever. Is there a way to estimate uh, whether the impact to the community will be more than the investment made into it? I think you have to look at the long-term use of the park, both as a community asset that all of us get to use every day, and then all of the different events going on at the park just about every week. Uh, Rick, this is a complicated subject, uh, and I know that you're not in a position to answer all questions, but obviously you heard the criticism yeah. that a, a lot of money was put in, public money, and only one out of four or five facilities were even completed. How did that happen? Well, I, I think first of all, it doesn't mean we've stopped trying to complete the rest of the facilities. I think the more important point here is that all these facilities are owned by the county, go to the benefit of the county, and I think there's a, a, another very big difference here than other things that are funded uh, and I'm going to take, say, the Ed Smith Stadium or uh, the Raymond James Stadium that gets money from the public. The difference there is those facilities are really for a, a private entity, the Orioles in the case of Ed Smith, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the case of Raymond James. But this is a public park that's used every day by the public and is utilized not just for rowing, but it's utilized for running, for it's got a playground, it's got restroom facilities, and we look at this vision as something that can grow with the community. This is really kind of the central park of Sarasota and Manatee County, like Central Park in New York, and that's a much different entity than those other facilities. You can't take a little league team and take it down to Ed Smith Stadium on Saturday when it's vacant. Pat, you have been out there for years in terms of watching how much money is going into this. When you hear what the, the, the explanation is, does that explain anything to you? Well, I appreciate you know the difference between this park, which is a public park, uh, and perhaps a, a spring training stadium, okay? Um, but um, from the outset, when you make a commitment, and actually the, the press release that the county sent out when um, Benderson Rowing Park won the bid uh, to host the 2017 World Rowing Championship uses the word commitment at least twice. I have a copy of it here. <laughs> we want to quote from it. Um, it also breaks out how much the public portion of this public-private partnership had invested at the time, this is 2013, and the commitment that was going to be made by the private partner. And um, while it is for the public, you know, when you enter into these public-private partnerships, they're partnerships, and both partners have an obligation, whether this is for the public, good, um, or otherwise. Kathy, I saw you in, in uh, Adam's piece talk about the in increasing cost to taxpayers. Mm -hmm. What is the single biggest question you have? Well, the economic impact projections. When, when in 2010, when it went from 6.7 million to 25 million, they hired a USF economist with, who was reputable, who said that with a boathouse at $25 million, which we've spent much more we don't have, the annual impact would be $14 million a year. A couple years later, when the costs were skyrocketing, they hired someone who I don't consider reputable at all, Donna Arduin, who went to the state lobbying for money with a study saying that this rowing facility was going to bring in $209 million a year in annual spending. So my concern is, you know, half the kids in this county are on a free or reduced lunch. We need real economic development. This does not look like the real deal. All right. We are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on taxpayer money and being spent on Benderson Park right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get 
get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Our conversation continues right after we get the check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Alan, thanks. Right now, a beautiful shot today. Uh, we have some clouds around, but still not too bad out there in the waters. We're going to look at uh, some showers developing, though, in the Gulf of Mexico in these last frames here and then working their way onshore associated with a cold front that's going to be moving through tomorrow morning. But out ahead of it, we have this little line of low pressure, if you will, a prefrontal trough, which will bring us a good chance for showers and storms. Those winds will be basically moving out of the northwest tomorrow, and that will usher in some of the coolest air of the season. Well, it will be the coldest air of the season. We haven't had a lot around, and uh, that cool air right now over uh, Alabama and into Georgia and North Florida right now, but not quite here yet. It's been rather warm and muggy today. Temperatures were above average. And look at these big storms now approaching and moving into Anna Maria Island, north end of Longboat Key, western portions of Manatee County near Bradenton, uh, stretching off toward Pinellas County and I-275 along the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Tough driving conditions there as this continues to push off to the east at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Not much in Sarasota at this point, but this line extends down into the Gulf of Mexico, which will work its way onshore here in the next couple of hours, bringing with it uh, some heavy downpours. We've already had some flood advisories into Pinellas County. In fact, most of that county now under a flood advisory at this point. You can see a live sweep of the radar uh, showing that heavy rainfall stretching from uh, Bradenton, Holmes Beach, down southward, again, all the way down into Longboat Key. Now, the rainfall rate, an inch an hour in some of these cells, that's fairly significant. I mentioned that flood advisory now. It covers much of southern portions of Pinellas County right now, all the way down uh, to the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, and this will continue to, continue to extend southward into Manatee County, I do believe, in the next half hour to hour or so, as we are expecting that heavy rain to continue. Now, the dry air, though, is behind it. It will eventually slip in by midday tomorrow. We'll look for a gorgeous uh, afternoon anyway. We could see a few morning showers around, and then temperatures start to fall significantly on Wednesday. Currently, we have a cloud, cloudy skies and 82 degrees. The dew point temperature now is still very up uh, high into the mid-70s right now. Winds are out of the south at 7, and the pressure is rising ever so slightly. The high today was above average 87 degrees, the average at 84, the record at 90. No rainfall officially at the airport yet, but we will get some in the next couple of hours. Those winds will switch around to a north-northwesterly direction beginning tomorrow, just after sunrise, and then the cool air begins, and we shut down the Gulf of Mexico. They'll start to cool down, too, for any kind of hurricane development in the Gulf. There's still a possibility of development, though, in the Caribbean. Morning showers possible tomorrow. North winds at 15 knots for boaters. Seas running 2 to 3 feet with a moderate chop on the bays and inland waters. Advisories will be issued for coastal waters beginning tomorrow evening. Here's the forecast as it breaks down. Sunny on Wednesday, breezy, cool, high of 74, a chilly start on Thursday morning, a low of 52, and then 76 for a high on Thursday. Pretty good, though. Nice weather from Wednesday through Saturday. Al will be back with a conversation coming up right after this. 
This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. At Humana, we believe great things are ahead of you when you start with healthy. And part of staying healthy means choosing the right Medicare plan. Humana can help. With Original Medicare, you're covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits when you're sick, but keep in mind, you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums than you do with other plans, and prescription drug coverage isn't included. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable monthly plan premium and in some areas, no plan premium. It's all described in this free book in DVD. Call for yours and discover how an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana could save you money. Call 1-855-395-9803. That's 1-855-395-9803. Now. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door. A door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong. A place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Welcome back. Did taxpayers get what they paid for at the World Rowing Championships? Joining us for more is Rick Piccolo, CEO of Sarasota Bradenton International Airport and a member of the Nathan Benderson Community Park Foundation. Virginia Halley, president of Visit Sarasota County. Kathy Antunis, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio. And Pat Rounds, a community activist. Let's begin with a uh, statement that was given to us by Stephen Rodriguez, the new president and CEO of Sanka at Nathan Benderson Park. Quote, all projects for which funding has been secured are complete and additional amenities on the master plan will be addressed at fundraising as fundraising takes place. Uh, Rick, a lot of the attention has been in the last couple of weeks on the, the boathouse, which mm -hmm. um, help us understand this because you've raised $15 million for the construction of it. You, uh, Another additional $5 million was asked, I believe, from the state legislature. Um, where did the, all that money go? Well, well, I think some of that money, $7 million, went to the construction of the boathouse. There were a lot of other things that were constructed here. I don't have a breakdown of, of a, I don't have a spreadsheet here of, of what different facilities got built with the privatized money versus the public money. What I will say is that we haven't abandoned any chances of building a boathouse or anything like that. Uh, would we have liked to have had it done in time for the World Championships? Yes, but they still pulled off a fantastic event. Uh, and if, if I may, the, the economic impact that I've seen over the last four years looking at the, the statistics from, from Visit Sarasota was about $87 million in just the last four years. So the public's gotten more than a return on the investment, and, and I don't mean to, to beat a dead horse here, but it, it is a public facility that, that is used 365 a year, and, and to me, that's a much different type of investment than in a private facility for well, some other. What was the obstacle in terms of getting all the construction done on time? Well, I think funding is one of the obstacles, and it's been a harder effort than we anticipated to raise all the private funding. With that said, uh, I, think, I think the community should be very proud of what was raised and also be very thankful that we have a person like Randy Benderson and his family here because they've, they've put millions of dollars of their own money into it, the foundation money. and many things that are in kind and, and just to give you an example the week before we had hurricane irma when i when i went to the rowing meet 
all the people that work in the landscaping crew of the Benderson Foundation, had, uh, I was talking to them, they had been up four days getting everything back in shape in time for the World Championships. Uh, I, the community should be very thankful for the kind of contributions they get for these things. Uh, Kathy, when you hear the argument that the, the Bendersons have kicked in, I, I think it was at least six million dollars for, mm -hmm. for the boathouse, right. um, you, you're shaking your head. Well, you know, Rick is saying you said that you raised 15 million. I've heard, and, and actually, Rick, you're with the Nathan Benderson Foundation. Sanka never raised the money. Okay, they cr and then the Bendersons created their own foundation to raise money. They didn't donate to Sanka, and then because Sanka is subject to procurement and competitive bidding, my understanding is reported in the Herald Tribune that the Benderson Foundation didn't have to put out to competitive bid, and they hired themselves to build the facility, which just this was sold as an economic engine and you would expect some competitive bidding and everyone would have a shot at the jobs that that's one aspect um, it is not correct to say that 15 million in private money has been raised it's only five or six um, and you know this is what the Bennersons promised I'm glad they were out there doing what they said they would do um, but they haven't come through with the private money and that's that's a problem. Um, and can I just toss in, you know, we do have a problem with poverty in Sarasota County. There, half the kids in this county have, are on a free or reduced lunch. Our economic engine projects need to work. They need to actually work. And I don't know, I, I quoted two studies that were wildly different. So I'm very skeptical about the numbers. Your, uh, I don't see where, the, where there's a nexus here between the school lunch program and the park. The park has provided $87 million worth of economic benefit. It does provide economic return to the community and, and it provides tax revenue and those types of things that help with the schools. I, I don't see where it becomes a detriment. The two are mutually exclusive. There's, there's no nexus here between the two. And our children got to participate in this event. The, the school children were able to adopt teams from different countries to learn about their con those countries and then to come to the event, uh, thanks to the Benderson Family Foundation, to meet uh, these Olympians. It was an amazing experience for the athletes and our it, students. It was an amazing uh, experience for everybody in our community. The, the, the question is whether uh, the community in terms of, uh, is, is going to get the em economic return that we the community was led to believe that that it would get. Well, I, I think those figures ha have already been, have shown that it's getting that economic benefit. And the other thing it does that I want to emphasize is that it has many charitable events. Uh, in another week, there's a Making Strides Against uh, Cancer that, event that will be there. A Walk for Al Alzheimer's in November. Uh, the Jingle Bell Run for Arthritis in December. Uh, the Dragon Boat races that were there for breast cancer. The, it, it has a lot of community benefit that help lots of people that are disadvantaged. Pat, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Kathy uh, in the last segment. What is the biggest qu uh, question that you have after listening to this that you have? Well, first, I don't think there's any question that there are lots of good things that go on at the park, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, uh, the, the calendar is, is filled with a variety of things, okay? But to get back to its dollars and cents, um, instead of going slow and earning your way to greater investment, what this part did for some reason was to go for the gusto, to go for the, to host the largest international rowing event there is, and to make all of these things happen and basically on a pond that essentially was just a pond. There had to be a dredging and filling done. There was a man-made regatta island all paid for with public funding. Um, there was through landscaping. The tax. Yes, through the tourist tax, but that can also, the tourist tax ultimately is for public use, okay? It might be collected from people who are coming here to visit and enjoy themselves, but ultimately it is for all of us to use. And when it's segmented into a, a, a project like this, where there, again, a commitment there, when you have a commitment, a public-private partnership, the commitment really needs to be binding. And what I'd like to ask, you asked me what's my question, was there ever a real written binding agreement between the partners to this, it's $60 million when, when you add all the cost of the structures yeah, and... Yeah, less than yeah. a minute left. Okay. Yeah. 
Was there ever a true binding commitment for this endeavor? Or was it the public will do what it usually does, and the private will come in and maybe or maybe not make good on, on its promise? I, I don't, I'm not privy to what agreements are made between the, the county and, the, and the, the developers and that type of thing. I saw a public good from the first day that I went to the very first meet. My effort, along with the effort of many other people, volunteers as well, is to turn this what was a borrow pit into a beautiful public park, which it is, and also a venue that de delivers economic development, which it did, and, and whether you thought they were shooting for the moon with the World Ra Rowing Championship or not, they did achieve a wonderful wor a venue and wonderful event that even the, the leaders of the World Rowing Championship say they'll be back. They'll we be back next a, year. We have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a minute. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Listen to this important message. If you owe money to the IRS, you will want to hear this. The IRS is cracking down on those who owe back taxes. They send out devastating letters, garnish paychecks, and even put liens on your home or business. You may have heard of it. It's called enforced compliance. Penalties and interest compound daily on your back taxes, putting you under a mountain of debt. Tax 10,000 has years of experience connecting people with tax resolution specialists who will negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, they will handle all the necessary forms and can negotiate a tax settlement with the IRS. It's that simple. And if you qualify, you may end up saving thousands of dollars, finally ending your financial stress. Now is the time for a fresh start. Now is the time to call Tax 10,000. 800-699-3188. That's 800-699-3188. Call now. What if you had a medical emergency away from home? My chest hurts. I can't breathe. What you need is Mobile Help, America's premier mobile medical alert system. Most systems only work at home, but with Mobile Help, you get help outside the home with coverage nationwide on one of the largest cellular networks at the press of a button. Call the number on your screen for a free full color brochure. We'll send you everything you need, including this base station, the patented mobile device, and the waterproof pendant and wrist button. You can also add the fall button that automatically detects falls and signals help. Call today and receive a risk-free 30-day trial. There is no equipment to buy and no long-term contract. For a limited time, you will also receive a free emergency key box with your plan purchase. Remember, mobile help keeps you safe coast to coast. Call 1-800-916-8638. That's 1-800-916-8638. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Rick, I'm going to start with you because I'm going to pick up on the, on the question that Pat ha had. Uh, you know, Tampa just got the 2021 Super Bowl because uh, it was supposed to go to Los Angeles and the new stadium in Los Angeles is not going to be ready in time. So the, the question is that you had the eyes of the world on us for this event and only one of the five buildings that was, was planned was ready for the golden moment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the question is, you know, were we ready? Did we deliver what we said we were going to deliver? I, I would argue that we did. First of all, whatever temporary facilities were in place or some of the permanent facilities that we hope to have in the future were, were just perfectly well. Secondly, most of the infrastructure is below the water and, and both in the lengthening of the course, the wave attenuation, uh, the uh, ability to broadcast the entire route of the, of the race was along that bridge that was constructed there. For, for the people that are out in the audience, they didn't see anything different. And if you go to FISA, which was the governing body, they said it was one of the best venues ever. So Virginia, how do we calculate the economic impact of this event on the, the, uh, the area in terms of the short term and the longer term? So we capture all the information and interview people at the park while the event's going on. We'll be capturing information from the teams. They booked through our housing bureau so we know exactly what they spent on their hotel rooms. And then the other part of what we're capturing is what it did for our reputation. From the day we were awarded this bid, 
four years ago has given us the ability to bring other high-profile events to the facility. Uh, Kathy, considering where we are now, what is your concern in terms of the future of this facility and what it will bring to the Sun Coast? Well, this facility is supposed to be financially self-sufficient. It's uh, by October of 2018, and it's been reported that each event, they're $10,000 in the hole. Um, I bring up, you know, what's going on overall with the economy because this is supposed to help. This was, this was portrayed in very lavish terms with really big promises, and it's hard to believe that it's going to have that big an impact. And, and Pat, so what do you do? Do you basically just stay on the top of the, the shareholders here, or uh, you know, what does the community who is concerned about the, the amount of taxpayer money going to this do? Well, I would like to see a more concerted effort to bring in the private sector and really contribute what's been missing here. You say that $15 million have, has been raised in private money, yet there's only a $6 million finished tower. And if you, from the outset, make a firm commitment, a binding agreement among both parties, then there's a tendency to be more realistic with what your expectations are. All right, we have and that to hasn't happened here. Hey, thanks. <laughs> we have to leave it where we are. FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And remember, you can stay up to date on our latest breaking news instantly, like the University of Florida situation last week with the new ABC7 app. If you have an iPhone or an iPad currently on your news app, you'll need to go to the App Store now and search for WWSB or My Sun Coast, then download the new version. If you're an Android user, you'll get the new version automatically. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight, Rick Piccolo, the CEO of Sarasota Bradenton International Airport and a member of the Nathan Benderson Community Park Foundation, Virginia Halley, president of Visit Sarasota County, Kathy Antunis, host of The Detail on WSRQ Radio, and Pat Rounds, a community activist. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather, plus an update on the Soldier ki soldiers killed in Niger, stay with us. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-628-1251. 800-628-1251. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get the final check on your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. Right now, a cold front is still well back behind this uh, area of rain that we're getting right now. Some of the rain has been heavy at times. Now, we will see those winds switch around more to a northwesterly direction that begins tomorrow after the front moves on through, and then that begins fall, too, because we've had 
unseasonably warm weather thus far this fall, but that's going to uh, change pretty drastically, I think, over the upcoming days. The heavy rain now falling into Bradenton, up near Palmetto, Rabonia. Some lightning strikes occurring there along I-275, spreading off toward Ellington and now toward Parrish, too. Now, the rain is uh, heavy at Anna Maria, but it's soon to ta taper off a little bit there, but this line we'll have to keep an eye on for the possibility of some gusty winds up to 30 to uh, possibly 40 miles an hour. A few lightning strikes evident on the radar imagery, too, just over the past half hour or so near western portions of Manatee County. And then that rain starting to spread down now into Sarasota County near the airport. Uh, some heavier showers. Bayshore Gardens getting some heavy rainfall right now. Braden and Palmetto uh, all the way to Oneco. The rainfall rates up to about an inch an hour. And you can see the area in green here. This is a, uh, an urban flood advisory basically with flooding taking place throughout this region as a result of that heavy rain over the area for the past hour and a half, two hours now. And it looks as though that is starting to change for Pinellas County as some drier air will continue to slip on in. And that looks good for us. So tomorrow we'll look for a lot more sunshine in the afternoon as a result of that drier air starting to move in. 82 degrees right now, our current our temperature dew point way up there at 76. Winds are out of the south at 7. And the pressure 29.95 inches. The high today, a warm one, 87 degrees. We can say goodbye to those upper 80s for a while at least. 90, the record set back in 1993. Uh, we're getting rain at the airport now, so that's going to change for this daily total. Those winds will change too out of the north and northwest beginning tomorrow after sunrise and continuing throughout the next couple of days. With that north wind, we'll see temperatures well below seasonal averages on Wednesday and Thursday. And that wind will make it feel a bit cooler, too, uh, come Wednesday morning as the front works on through. Again, future cast indicating most of the rain will be over uh, by 7 a.m. on Tuesday. There's a few residual showers possible, but some clearing later in the afternoon. For boaters, a moderate chop on the bays and inland waters. Those winds and seas will pick up, too, later on in the day. Water temperature at 82 degrees, but that's soon to change, too. That's going to drop 5 to 6 degrees here in the next couple of days. A low tide upcoming, 902. And sunrise will be at 736. The forecast tonight, scattered showers, a few thunderstorms, some of that rain heavy at times, 75 for your low. And then tomorrow, look for uh, clearing skies in the afternoon, 30% chance for a few morning showers, a high of 82. The extended forecast does call for breezy and cooler conditions on Wednesday and Thursday. Alan will be back with primetime headlines right after this. We asked our customers, why is Consumer Cellular your choice in wireless? Consumer Cellular helps me save money. It's simple and easy. It is reliable. I like the fact that there are no contracts. By moving to Consumer Cellular, my cost is 50% less than it was. They fit the plan to you. I have everything I want with Consumer Cellular. Their customer service is fabulous. Customers are their number one priority. I really feel like they take care of me. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. We really appreciate the AARP discount. AARP members get exclusive discounts. It's easy to switch. You could use your own phone and you could use your own number. Wild horses wouldn't drag me away from Consumer Cellular. Go with Consumer Cellular. You're going to save a lot of money. Switch today. It's all backed by a 30-day risk-free guarantee. Call 1-800-368-8758. Go online or visit a Target store today. Attention type 2 diabetics. The FDA warns of an increased risk of amputation associated with certain diabetes medications. If you took the diabetes medications Invulcana or Invulcamet and then suffered an amputation or one of these other serious injuries, call the Rely On Group right now. If you've suffered amputation or any of these injuries after taking your diabetes medication, call the Rely On Group today. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA has recently warned about an increased risk of leg and foot amputations associated with the use of certain diabetic medications such as Invokana and Invokamet. If you or a loved one took the diabetes medications Invokana or Invokamet and then suffered an amputation, ketoacidosis, kidney failure, or even death, Call the Rely On Group now. We are here to help you get the justice you deserve. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-355-8205. That's 800-355-8205. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. 
That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Checking primetime headlines, nearly three weeks after four U.S. servicemen were killed in an ISIS-led ambush in Niger, the call for answers is growing, but it's not just the investigation into their deaths getting attention. A public feud between a gold star widow, a Democratic congresswoman, and President Trump continues to escalate. Omar Jimenez has the latest from Washington. I didn't know there was a thousand troops in Niger. Did you know how many men and women were on the ground in Niger and what they're doing there? I did not. The Pentagon Monday responding to criticism by top lawmakers who say they were left in the dark on the mission in Niger, where four U.S. service members were killed in an early October ambush. If the Congress doesn't believe that they're, not, that they're getting sufficient information, then I need to double my efforts to provide them with information. The Pentagon insists it kept Congress informed of the operation, and the White House says it notified congressional leaders in June about troops conducting counterterrorism duties in Niger and Cameroon. Among the questions still lingering, how Sergeant LaDavid Johnson was separated from his 12-member team as it was ambushed. His body wasn't recovered until 48 hours later. His widow speaking out on the lack of answers on ABC's Good Morning America. I don't know how he got killed, where he got killed, or anything. I don't know that part. We owe the families as much information as we can find out about what happened. The only thing I'm asking for today is it a bit, a bit of patience to make sure that what we provide to you when we provide it is factual. In facts are what Pentagon investigators are continuing to pursue as they release a preliminary timeline of that deadly attack. From the time the firefight was initiated until Sergeant Johnson's body was recovered, French, Nigerian, or U.S. forces remained in that area. A Florida man appeared in court today on terrorism-related charges after authorities claim they foiled his plot to bomb a shopping mall. Federal authorities arrested Vicente Solano Friday. His alleged target was the Dolphin Mall, one of South Florida's busiest shopping locations. During a month-long investigation, undercover FBI agents met with Solano several times. They arrested him after giving him a fake bomb they say he planned to use in the attack. The long-awaited sentencing of Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl is being delayed because of recent comments by President Trump. Trump had described Bergdahl as a dirty, rotten traitor and called for him to be executed by firing squad or thrown from a plane without a parachute. Last week, Bergdahl pled guilty to all charges and faces up to life in prison. His sentencing hearing is now set for Wednesday. Several U.S. Army soldiers are being called heroes for rescuing two swimmers in distress. The soldiers are members of the U.S. Army Special Forces Group and were in South Florida for the funeral of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson, who was killed in Niger earlier this month. After the funeral, the soldiers went to Sunny Isles Beach, where they saw two people flailing their arms in the water. They dove in and saved a man and a child. The soldiers say they did what is part of their job. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us, and have a great night.